don't overbuild your drift car. Can't make it absolutely perfect, right? None of this is sponsored. I'm not exactly new to the internet. All right guys, it's been a little over two and a half months since I've given any updates on the Mustang and basically that's what we're gonna do today. So just cause some time has gone by since the last video doesn't mean that I haven't been busy. So let's jump right into it. All right, so one of the very first things that I did upon owning this car for the first 10 minutes was order a new set of headlights and I got this Eleanor grill. Now the headlights, it was because they were all fogged up and ugly. The Eleanor grill is just because I like this style of grill. Now I do like the GT California special front bumper but I went ahead and got the MMD front chin splitter because, well, for one, it was more affordable than an entire bumper and it's uh, less paint that we have to worry about. But I think overall, it gave the car a very aggressive look. Headlights on eBay, 55 bucks. Grill, I think it was 50 bucks, maybe 55 bucks as well. Not quite sold on it yet. I still have the OE GT Pony Grill, just in case I want to go back to it. In hindsight, I should have bought new fog lights too. All right, guys, on the inside, of the Mustang, you can see that I've been, uh, I got real busy. In fact, I gutted the entire interior. And the reason I did that is because the carpet was moldy and it smelled super bad. And <laughs> the only way that I can get the smell out was by removing the carpet. And once I started removing the carpet, it was coming out in chunks. And I decided to just go ahead and remove it and remove any of the interior because I was going to put racing seats in it anyway. The other part of that is that the dash had a crack in it. Uh, you can't see the crack anymore because I went ahead and I flocked the entire dash. So now it's like a black suede all the way across and you can't see any cracks, which is super nice. Now, after I painted the interior white, put the dash back in, uh, my feet were slipping on the gloss white paint, which is why I decided to Raptor line it. Now, the other thing you might notice is, of course, the steering wheel is gone and you got the energy quick release adapter here. Now this is the one where you can use the horn. I have another one that's SFI approved and I think I might switch it to that one. Um, but I am using, <laughs> not me with the scrubby pad. I am using the Status Deep Dish Suede Steering Wheel with the red stitching and quick release. This is really hard with one here. There you go. There it is. So there you go, quick release steering wheel is on. Uh, you can go ahead and remove it. it. Makes it easy to get in and out of the car especially with the status seat. All right, let's move on to some hardware here. We've got the handbrake here. There it is, you can see it. So this is a Chase Base Hydro, and this was an inline uh, setup because I didn't buy the reservoir like a dummy, but I got that on the way. And then you see the handles Chase Base as well. But this bracket system is actually from Scotty D. Um, and it bolts right into the S197. I did have to modify this a little bit to accept the chase bays handle but other than that everything is absolutely perfect and once the line is in there it doesn't get in the way and i did modify the center console to accept uh, pretty much the handbrake now i did completely remove the stock parking brake and that's because i have no intention of using it and it's less stuff in the car all right, and what pairs nicely with the Scotty D handbrake is the Scotty D dual caliper brackets. Now, let me make one thing clear. I know I'm name dropping a lot of brands right now, but none of this is sponsored. I'm basically going on the Facebook pages. I'm messaging people and I'm asking them what they're using. Um, I'm reading reviews and kind of making my own decision based off reviews and asking other the individuals what they have used. So everything that I'm using is based off my own decision and I'm gonna test the crap out of it. So none of this is sponsored. I'm just being transparent with the stuff that I'm using and why I chose it. And basically this is bolt on ease. I don't have to modify a lot of stuff. I'm basically just taking parts, bolting them on and running with it. So yeah, the Scotty D dual caliper bracket, you can see it right there. It utilizes the stock S197 brake calipers. So again, you don't gotta modify a lot of stuff. And since I already removed the factory parking brake, all the factory parking brake stuff is coming out as well. Try to make everything super accessible and super easy to work on if I ever need to work on it. Now, the last part to my handbrake setup is of course the lines. So you gotta be able to connect all that. And again, Scott ED sells a line kit, pre-made lines that'll connect to your hydro, to your booster, and that'll go back to your two rear calipers with the T-fitting and everything is included. So it makes it super easy. All right, let's talk about seats because you guys saw the status steering wheel with the red stitching and you see my old 
Challenger seat that I have here. It was actually the passenger seat for the Challenger. So basically this is gonna be a placeholder in this car because once I got rid of that interior, I went ahead and sold it all so I wouldn't have it in my already cramped tight garage. So I'm using a planted technology seat bracket just like I did in the Challenger. Put this uh, status passenger status seat on the driver's side and I'm gonna be using this for now. But my color scheme, I guess you could say, is gonna be kind of like the Alcantara and red. So again, this seat is just a placeholder for now. Now the last piece of the interior that I'm trying to work on and get completely done up, this is nasty door panel. If you have an S197, you know what I'm talking about. You see, because when Ford designed the S197, they said we can't make it absolutely perfect, right? We can't make this America's car without one flaw, and that's these nasty door panels, right? And uh, the leather was falling off, pulled the leather off, I pulled off the other adhesive tape on it, and now I'm left with this um, like premature pubic hair left on this door panel, and I just can't live with that. So I'm going to go ahead and take this door panel off, take the passenger side off, soak this in some kind of degreaser to get it off, and just leave it as clean plastic. Because if I do put a cage in this car, these bitches got to go anyway. Now. I'm not exactly new to the internet. I've jumped on a lot of these drifting pages and uh, Ford Mustang drift pages, and I always hear the same thing, don't overbuild your drift car. And I know somebody at some point is gonna say, Brian, don't overbuild your drift car, just go out there and drive it. But basically, all I've done so far is just arts and crafts. I painted some stuff, I removed some stuff, and I made some stuff better. And when people say, hey, don't overbuild your drift car, don't do this, don't do that, um, just do whatever the fuck it is you want to do anyway. I don't mean to come off like absolutely ruthless or kind of rude in any way, shape, or form. I've gotten a lot of help. Um, but I'm just saying that I know people are going to ask me what's taking me so long. And basically, it's I'm kind of tackling everything in different segments to what kind of suits what I know that I like. And then we're going to go ahead and test and tune from there. So let me get this door panel off, and then we'll start cleaning them up. All right guys, so that's gonna wrap up today's video. And it's not because I'm done working in the garage here, it's because I actually have no idea how I'm gonna clean those doors. And I don't wanna bore you guys with a bunch of trips to Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart, wherever it is that I need to go to figure out how to get that stuff off the doors. I might just jump on Google first before I go ahead and do that. But thank you guys so much for watching this update video. I know it's been a while. I just have a really busy schedule. In fact, coming up on my schedule, I'm headed to Formula Drift Irwindale. Um, here in a few weeks so if you're there you see me say what's up and then after that we'll be gearing up for SEMA 2023 I got some really big news coming for that but I just haven't said anything yet uh, but thank you guys for watching if you like this video hit that like button leave a comment below let me know if you want to know more detailed stuff I'm doing to the drift Mustang um, if there's something you want to know that I'm not showing let me know I'll gladly put it in the next video but that's it for now, guys. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss on this drift build. My goal is to have it done by springtime. Thanks for watching this video and everything else on Toronto Racing. Until next time, peace out.